Hello and welcome. My name is Brent Weaver and this is the Digital Agency Show. The podcast that goes behind the scenes with today's top agencies and entrepreneurs. I am really glad you're here and once again, it's time to transform your business mindset. Hey, what's up, digital agency owners and podcast listeners. Before I introduce today's guest, I want to ask you a quick question. Are you currently stressed out, cash crunched, or fed up with your business? If you feel this way, you might think that you have a lead generation problem, or maybe that it's the area you live in, or maybe this market has become too competitive. Maybe you think that your business can't be turned around, and I want you to think again. In my many years of experience, I can tell you now that it's something much deeper that you're likely not even aware of yet. It's like a client who comes to you saying they need a website or Facebook ads or maybe a mobile app developed, but they don't even realize the deeper challenge or opportunity that's blocking them from success. Now, if you'd like to find out what your deeper challenge is, then I want to invite you to apply for a YouGurus strategy call where we'll dig into those underlying issues and get you moving forward like never before. The aha moments will shift the way you think forever and you'll finally get the answers as to why your business hasn't taken off. The number one most important decision to rapidly grow your business starts by booking your strategy call. Go to yougurus.com slash apply to start your application process for this free call. Once again, go to yougurus.com slash apply to get started. All right, let's introduce today's guest. Hey, what's up, podcast listeners, digital agency owners. Welcome to another episode of the Digital Agency Show. Excited to have you guys here yet for another week of great content about how to grow your agency. Uh, this week, we are welcoming uh, quite a celebrity in the internet marketing space. Neil Patel is joining us today. And if you guys have not yet heard of Neil, he is the co-founder of Crazy Egg, uh, which is an analytics software that allows website owners to see what visitors are doing when they visit your site. He also is a co-founder of Kiss Metrics, another analytics platform uh, that helps uh, you guys track who has visited your website. And more recently, Neil has founded a digital agency called Neil Patel Digital, um, which is a 40 plus person agency um, that he has uh, grown in literally just the last year. So we're really excited to welcome Neil Patel to our program. Uh, thanks for having me. So Neil, uh, you've got a few different businesses going on. Um, what? Uh, how, how do you make that work for starters? You've got a couple different software companies, and then recently you've actually created your own uh, agency. Um, how, how does that all fit together? Yeah, I, I just focus. So I focus on one thing that's driving traffic. Other than that, I don't run anything else. So I drive traffic to the sites. They're all in the marketing niche, so it's pretty much the same work. I don't, I'm not the CEO of any business. I don't manage any of the team members or anything like that. I don't pick the direction of the company. I just drive traffic. That's very interesting. How, how did that um, come about for you? Like what's so interesting about driving traffic? It was the best use of my time. And that's what <laughs> I was good at. I'm a terrible manager. Uh, for example, I remember I was in the office and my, the guy who runs the company, Mike, he was telling me, hey, you know, uh, can you go and listen with the sales guys, their calls, help them out, be on the pitches? I was there for a whole week. I couldn't even listen to one call. I was like, oh, you guys closing deals? They're like, nope, not today. And then it asked like three hours later. I'm like, did you close any deals? They're like, nope, not today. And keep in mind, we don't take deals lower than six figures. So it's like, you're not going to close them multiple times a day, right? Right. I'm just like pestering the sales guys and they're like, you're not even doing anything. I'm like, yeah, I suck at this. I don't have the attention span. I don't want to do it. I just do what I'm good at, which is driving traffic. So how does uh, founding a company come about when that's kind of your superpower? And it sounds like you aren't, you know, you said you aren't the, the COO or you're not the, the manager. So are you uh, just finding other people that have the chops to run, let's say, these various software companies or an agency, and then you agree and say, okay, cool, I'm just going to drive an incredible amount of traffic to this business and you guys take care of the rest. Yeah, but keep in mind, the traffic doesn't always convert, right? So a good example of this is my blog gets um, a million visitors plus a month. My Kissmetrics blog, which I own, 
Kissmetrics was a standalone company. Investors own most of it, but I bought out the blog personally. Uh, and then eventually you'll see them merge together with the Neil Patel blog. But if you combine how much traffic I have just with my personal blog and the Kissmetrics blog, because that's pretty much like another arm of my personal blog, you're looking at 2 million visits a month. When you have a lot of traffic, it doesn't mean that you're going to generate a lot of revenue from it. And what I've learned the hard way over the years is it's not about quantity, it's about quality and going after terms like WordPress plugins, which can drive you like 3,000 visitors a day, won't necessarily make you a dollar in revenue. Mm. So you're really good at driving traffic and you bring on other people uh, to convert that into uh, revenue or are you, are you still a part of that whole strategy of, okay, we've got all this traffic, what are we going to do with it? No, I don't deal with that strategy. I just deal with the strategy of driving traffic and making it as relevant as possible. So last year, you um, it says you founded uh, Neil Patel Digital uh, in 2017. And I'm curious, did you guys start with, it says number of offices, six members on team 46. Uh, I, I know a lot of people that run digital agencies and uh, getting from like zero to 10 people is a, a, an uphill battle. Uh, how, how did that happen so quickly for you guys? So the US office was founded in 2017. The international ones have been operating for a long time. Okay. So you guys have been running this. The company wasn't started in 2017. The U.S. branch was. Ah. The way it happened is we have so much traffic. Like a, a good example of this is in Brazil years ago, people hit me up and they're like, hey, let's do an agency together. We'll end up running it and you just drive the traffic and leads. I don't do anything in Brazil. So I was like, sure, why not? Now, the number of people in total probably quite a bit larger than 47. I think we're in the 100 range. Um, I just put something on the site because I'm like, oh, too many people aren't going to believe that we have all these people, right? <laughs> and then the staff didn't want to put, hey, we're founded in 2016, and how do you have little people? Because most of the traffic is U.S. So we just sandbag the number. But um, in general, what's going to happen over the next 30 to 60 days is the Neil Patel site will go back to being my personal site. We'll have a Neil Patel digital site for the US. We'll have like a Neil Patel digital.com.br for the Brazil site and et cetera. And they can each put their own numbers on team numbers when they were founded and all this. So that way there doesn't create too much confusion. I think this is, there's, there's so much to pull here as an agency owner that you have, uh, you're so committed to this, this superpower that you have of driving traffic and you've been able to scale that without necessarily having to take on other roles and responsibilities. Uh, you mentioned um, one uh, COO of one of your companies. I mean, how, how are you finding those people? I mean, I mean, it sounds like this Brazil office kind of found you in a way. Um, but how are you able to, to, to find those people? Yeah, so my brother-in-law runs all the software companies and my sister, and they do an amazing job. Uh, Mike was my roommate in Las Vegas when I used to live there. And he's just like, yo, let's just create an agency type of company. I was like, I don't want to. And he's just like, I'll do all the work. I was like, okay, do whatever you want. <laughs> so so obviously a, 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 a... I trusted him and I knew he was good at management and growing businesses because he's done that before, right? So I was just like, it's not taking my time. So sure, why not? Because he's just like, we get four to 5,000 consulting leads a month. Keep in mind, most of them are junk. So let's say 100 and something to 200 and something good leads a month of people who can afford like six figures and they're interested in paying us. And then I'm like, sure, do whatever you guys want. And then from there, they work on closing them. A lot don't work out because we can't provide results based on their expectations that they have. Uh, some we can provide results, but we can't make it profitable for them. So we don't do it. And some just, you know, work out well. And then out of those, you got to pitch them and hopefully you close a percentage of them. Four to 5,000 consulting leads per month. That is... Most are junk though. Like, <laughs> sure. But I mean, I, I mean, just putting that in perspective of the average agency, if they're, you know, I think probably for most people, most of their leads probably are not worth actually doing business with. And in, in just thinking about that in terms of, uh, you know, driving qualified or semi-qualified leads. I mean, you guys are, are literally cherry picking a very small number of opportunities that come through to your business. 
Yes, we're really picky, but again, it's it, it's I've been doing this for 16 years, right? So when you put it in that perspective, it's actually not that many leads. I want to <laughs> get to I want to get to a place. My goal by the end of this year is to get to on neilpatel.com, 3 million monthly unique visitors. And then hopefully at the end of 2019, I can be somewhere between five and 6 million monthly unique visitors and just go crazy and just take over the marketing technology space. Because what my goal is, is I don't look at consulting. I don't look at revenue. I just look for eyeballs and education, helping people for free. And my goal is like, how can I just get so many eyeballs um, and just crush the market? I'm really competitive. So like my master plan is I'm going to release the SEO software and just put all the features that you see that people are using in malls and all this stuff and just release it for free and say unlimited for free. Don't pay a dollar. I'm going to take what people are doing on SEM rush and paying them money and being like, all right, here's the 80% of the fee or here's 20% of the features that everyone's using the rest. They don't really use like, here you go. Everyone use it unlimited for free. And then just like, just keep doing that to the whole market. (laughs) <laughs> I, I I love this like world domination kind of master plan, but also this mindset around, uh, you know, educating people for free and generating the eyeballs. And, you know, I mean, that's, that's huge. And, and to say, you know, you're like, well, I've been doing this for 16 years. I mean, I've talked to a lot of digital agency owners that have been doing this for 16 years or more that are not driving 3 million or, or, you know, 1 million, 2 million monthly readers uh, to their blog or to their content. So obviously you have some, uh, something that is unique about your mindset, your approach, your content, your smarts. Um, So, I mean, obviously creating these, these, uh, these tools for free. I mean, those are really smart lead magnets of sorts. Um, what other things are you doing to drive this type of volume? Because I think there's lots of people out there that are publishing valuable content um, on their blog, but they're probably generating uh, not even, you know, 2% of what you are. One of the biggest things that I do is I go to Google Search Console all the time. I go see what people are finding me for. And I rewrite every single popular article with all the other keywords that I didn't include. So you're always looking at what what's the market searching for and you're publishing stuff that's, you know, continually publishing stuff or republishing and, 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 and attacking all of those other keywords. So this is just like a keyword game. If I play uh, Google well enough, they're going to rank me. I mean, obviously, I think somewhere I saw that you uh, drove 27,000, you know, relevant links to your, your website. I mean, that's not like, I mean, that, that there's something unique about that, right? Is it just because your content is so much better than other people and they're naturally linking to you or? Yeah, I try to end up content. I speak at conferences, I'm networking, building relationships, it all helps. So I try to combine everything and that's how, you know, that's how I've been just growing at a very rapid pace. It's doing whatever I can to just get my name out there, continually building the brand, helping people out for free and it all adds up. So you combine content, podcasts, videos, speaking, participating on the social web, it all eventually ends up creating, you know, a lot of trust and goodwill. So are you spending 40 hours, 50, 60 hours a week? Your full-time effort is on content creation on lots of different platforms and you've got these teams that kind of take care of the rest or are you still doing some of the consulting and some of the client work? No, I don't really do any consulting or client work. Uh, I just take care of all the traffic. Hmm. I, I think that's a, a, a phenomenal uh mindset to be in. I just, I know so many agency owners that are trying to do it all. They're trying to wear all of the different hats within the business. You know, they're doing sales, they're doing uh, content and, and trying to drive traffic. Um, and, you know, it's probably not working very well for them or they're not able to scale very quickly. Yeah. I, I don't think the model of just going out there and being like, Hey, I'm going to do everything is ideal because if you try everything, you're going to end up failing. You just don't have enough time in the day to do everything. Yeah. 
So what kind of uh, what kind of trends are you seeing on the traffic side? I mean, obviously, you talked about a lot of different channels like blogging and SEO and podcasting and speaking. Um, and maybe let's just focus in on uh, the search side because I know you've done a lot in SEO. Um, what are you seeing in terms of this um, as a channel? Not not as SEO in general, but like for agency owners, like people that are running a digital agency, how can they leverage SEO better to attract you know even some of the 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 the, the volume or quality of leads that you guys are are attracting? Write the content that is ideal for your perfect customer. So if your perfect customer is healthcare, like plastic surgeons, then go write all the marketing content that would be relevant to a plastic surgeon business owner. Don't go broad, go very specific. Yes, you won't get as many visitors, but you'll get way more customers. Mm, so being and it's not as competitive and you can get results much faster. So if that's, if, you know, I'm in that situation where I've identified a niche um, and I want to, that's my ideal customer, uh, you know, what kind of uh, quantity or, uh, you know, uh, pulse are we talking about here i mean are you, are you i mean it sounds like you would just go all in and write like as much content as you possibly can until you've saturated the market but you know what's reasonable for uh people that are you know kind of just getting their agency life going as in what do you mean what's reasonable like how much traffic or how many clients or yeah so just if the tactic is okay i'm going to write content for my ideal customer so you gave the healthcare example um you know am i writing five blog posts or am i writing 500 blog posts you would write like two to three a week and you would just keep doing it forever. So two to three a week forever. <laughs> you do it forever. You just build up the traffic and you expand um, and then go from there. So what are some, you mentioned Google uh, search console. So you're using uh, some tools like that to help you come up with ideas and uh, think of the different terms that people are searching for, and um, you know you're 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 busting out two to three of these a week. Is there any any secret uh, on on length or anything like that? Or they just just write produce as much content as you possibly can on those those types of keywords? Yeah, um, we so we look at content as we don't look at length as like it needs to be a minimum of thousand words or two thousand or five thousand. We look at it as we try to be as short as possible to get our message across. So you want to be in depth, but you don't want to have tons of words when you don't need them. So create the most in-depth content and of course, try to make it as concise as possible. Um, and we found that that ideally comes out to a few thousand words and up to like five, 6,000 words. So if you're, you know, this idea that you're talking about, like I'll go to random agency websites and see blog posts that are, you know, three to 500 words. I mean, that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about, you know, getting into a subject or a tactic or an idea enough that you're generating probably thousands of words per post. Correct. Yes. And if then, you're not generating thousands of words, you're probably not an expert and you're not going in depth enough. Mm. So even just looking at that as a, uh, a litmus test, like I know that, you know, sometimes you go to websites and you read blog posts and you're like, eh, like this isn't really, you know, is this really useful content or is this, you know, pacifying the the guilt I have of not blogging enough. So I might as well like assign this to my office manager and they're going to just, you know, post 500 words about whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it needs to be quality. Think of it this way. If someone read it, would you be like, oh, this is awesome. Do you think they would say like, I know what to do from this. Oh my God, these guys are so smart. I need to work with them. Or are they going to get the input? Like, ah, this is all right. Like, you know, whatever. And if they think something like the second, the latter, in which, oh, it's all right, it's whatever, you're not going to get any customers from it. You need people to be like happy, shocked, amazed by like how amazing and awesome your content is. If you're not knocking off their socks, then you're not going to gain them as a customer. Hmm. That's a, uh, a good litmus test. <laughs> so do you, um, I mean, for, for you, you obviously know your market really well. You've built multiple uh, platforms for uh, digital marketers. Um, so do you have anything where you like put content in front of ideal customers before you publish? Or are you guys just such in a rhythm that you just kind of publish and that's you just kind of see what the market responds to? Yeah, we do the latter. We just publish and see what the market responds to. So... 
Besides publishing content, are there any other specific things that um, an agency owner should be doing around their content to capture leads effectively or to nurture them into sales? I know you might not be the best sales manager, but I know you probably are you know, doing more than just generating the content. I mean, you're probably helping to, to create some of the mechanisms that actually convert them into leads. Um, is there anything specific that if I'm out there publishing expert content on healthcare, um, is it just that, or am I having to build any kind of mechanism on the back end to, to, to start turning those, that traffic into leads? Yeah, honestly, like I don't want to end up telling you, Hey, this is how you do it, or this is how it should be. Um, because I don't focus on it. So I honestly don't know the best way for it. Right. Just being blunt. So I'm probably not the best person to answer that because I haven't dealt with that in a long, long time. I have my own inclinations and ideas. Like the more you warm people up and you drive them through webinars and you capture leads and pre-qualify them and get on the phone, like all that kind of stuff helps and building that relationship and having multiple touch points. But again, because I'm not doing that myself, I would pretty much just be giving you guys or giving you incorrect information. Gotcha. So, so it's literally like for, for your seat that you sit in within your various businesses, it's so like, I mean, I, I know you've said this multiple times and maybe it's just not fully sinking in for me, but just, it's very much a hundred percent driving traffic, generating the content and everybody else in your business takes care of the rest, even on the, the funnel side or the webinar side or the selling side. I mean, those are all things that other people are, are, are taking over. Correct. So, I mean, I, I get the impression um, that, uh, you know, I, I mean, it sounds like you're, you're very competitive. Um, you're very laser focused. Um, what are some of those, uh, I mean, mindsets or, or habits that you bring into your world that keep you focused on that? I mean, is it just simply just saying no to everything else, admitting that you're not very good at it? Uh, you know, I, I just think of the story you were saying when you were going and managing your your sales team, you kind of uh, annoyed them maybe more than you helped them. So they probably said, get out of here, Neil, right? Like, like what I are... I annoyed them. I, <laughs> even, before, even before we started this interview, I messaged one of the sales guys, Nate, and I'm like, hey, I'm like, it's the end of the month. I'm like, how many more signed contracts are you going to get? <laughs> and they all complain like I asked them this like five times a day um, but <laughs> but uh, it doesn't I mean obviously you guys drive a lot of revenue so maybe there's a secret here right maybe it's just we, we need to annoy our salespeople until they're like you know they're like God and Neil's going to ask me again today right or something well it doesn't necessarily mean we drive a lot of revenue the point I'm trying to make is uh I just focused. And the reason I focused is Mike who runs the agency was the one who told me to focus. He's just like, we don't want you. He's like, just do this. And he's right. And that's what helps the most. Is there anything that you do in your relationship with Mike? I mean, I think that's a very, uh, bold thing for a COO to say is kind of stay in your box, right? Like stay in your lane and we'll take care of the rest. Oh, I'm not, I'm never the CEO of the company. Uh, Forget COOs. I'm talking about CEOs. Okay. Maybe I misheard you earlier in in the interview. So, so Mike is the CEO of, uh, yeah. So every company has a CEO. I don't run any of them. Gotcha. Okay. That's, um, I, I love to hear. I mean, I think a lot of people that are out there that have started a digital agency, I mean, that's definitely something that they've thought of, right? Is, you know, maybe they aren't, you know, the CEO type material. Uh, I know Mike was your roommate. Is there anything, um, I mean, it sounds like he had some experience running businesses and things like that, but um, are there any qualities that you would look for in a CEO besides just having a high trust level in the past experience? Uh, I just look for smart people. That's really it. Like just people who are hungry, they're smart and they're willing to do whatever, um, to succeed. So. Any, uh, any tips for our audience about how to find smart people besides, uh, rooming with them and, and, uh, and having them as members of your family, <laughs> which yeah, I think are on this. I have a bad track record of hiring. Yeah. I've gone through the route of, just hire a ton of people and someone eventually works out or someone doesn't. Uh, but I look for people who are good managers, who are process oriented, uh, who are smarter than me at uh, specific things, who are hungry, want to succeed. They're willing to do whatever it takes. They're fast executors. 
Um, and I just go and network with people, get to know them. And then eventually I'll hire whoever I think is amazing or could do a good job at it. What kind of challenges? Um, I mean, I feel like you're, you are very competitive. You're driven, very successful, uh, you know, just doing research on you and, and knowing uh, of you for a long time. Like your, your highlight reel is, uh, is impeccable. Uh, are there any types of, of, of challenges that you had to overcome through this process of building up uh, these businesses? Yeah, just tons of failure, right, over time. So um, the challenge is, is a lot of it's trial and error. Just because even right now I get a lot of leads doesn't mean my sales guy is close enough. doesn't mean they're doing a bad job. I'm just saying everything is a learning process. Just because I'm amazing at driving traffic doesn't mean – the fulfillment team is going to perform right away from day one. They're actually doing an amazing job uh, and they're working so hard, but you know, no business is perfect. The point I'm trying to get across is it's a learning process. Everyone improves over time. Even us, like we take on a client when we first started, are we able to provide results? Of course, but are we able to optimal our, our run, you know, fully efficient? Of course not. Do we have a lot of months where we're just burning a lot of money and negative on cash flow? Of course, right? Everything's a learning process and you have to get better. No business is perfect. I don't care who they are. Yeah, I think that's an important message um, for people that sometimes, I, I know when we're, you know, through our coaching programs and stuff, people a lot of times will feel like, you know, they're not doing enough or as well as other people or that other, you know, influencers or, or, or big names in the space, you know, are, are problem free. Um, but I think that's a good uh, lesson to learn from from somebody like you that you have uh even at your stage like you guys have big hairy problems yep yeah we have problems as well so, so but we're growing and fighting through them and it's all working out well so some of your clients uh at least on the digital side uh airbnb facebook uh american greetings into it uh some rather large names uh so these folks are just coming through to you guys by the means of, you know, reading your content, hearing you talk at a, at a conference, uh, or are you guys doing anything that's, you know, specific to get in front of, uh, names like Facebook? No, it's the first one, just blogging, speaking at conferences and they just come. On the, um, on the speaking side, I'm, I'm curious, is there, uh, again, is, are you getting most of your speaking engagements just through sheer word of mouth and, and traffic? Like everything is coming out of this traffic generation sphere and, and the credibility you have in that space and, and folks are just reaching out. Are you guys using any kind of, uh, you know, keynote company to help you with that? No, people just reach out to us. Sometimes keynote agencies hit us up saying like, hey, do you want to uh, be a keynote speaker or whatever they call it. Right. And I'll say yes or no, or, you know, and I just get a lot of inbound inquiries. Yeah, that's cool. I, I feel like coming off of this, this episode, I mean, for one, I, I feel like I need to, to, to even myself publish more, uh, content, more relevant, uh, stuff on our blog and, and make that a part of that. I, obviously you guys are getting in the, the millions of, uh, visitors per month. And I think that puts some context for most people in our industry that there's that much, uh, there's, there, there's that many eyeballs. I mean, that's a massive number for most people that are probably generating maybe a couple of thousand of visits, um, a month, you know, just to know that they're, even if it's not all, you know, buyers or whatnot, but that's, that's a huge, huge number that you're going for. So that's pretty cool. So Neil, are you ready for our lightning round? Let's do it. All right, man. What is the best advice you've ever received? Best advice is to focus. Which of your personal habits has contributed most to your success? Uh, I'm very like OCD and anal about every little thing. Like, oh, like people stepping on my grass. I'm like, you're flattening it. I need to pay attention to a lot of details. So, so don't, don't flatten Neil's grass, right? It's fake grass anyways, but yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is there a, I pay attention to all details in business, which really helps. Like I find the little things I nitpick. Okay. Very cool. Uh, and can you share an internet resource or tool that you use that you think our listeners would find valuable? Sure. Um, crazy egg.com is one of my businesses that'll help make your site more usable. You can run AB tests, see where people are clicking, where they're not, etc. And what book would you recommend and why? 
Uh, the Dip by Seth Godin tells you when to stick with it or when to quit. Very cool. I haven't uh, hasn't been recommended yet, so I always love to hear uh, fresh books and uh, big fan of Seth. Uh, and, and I like that most of his books are uh, very short, which is helpful for business readers that don't have a lot of time. Uh, can you tell our audience about how they can find out more about you and if there's anything that you have uh, for them to check out? Yeah, they can find out more about me from just going to neilpatel.com. Very cool. Well, Neil, thank you so much for stopping by the show today. I feel like we learned a lot about uh, focusing and specifically focusing on driving traffic and some of your uh, lessons learned and tactics for doing that. So really appreciate your time today. No worries. Thanks for having me. All right, guys, that is our show for this week. Stay tuned for more great content coming at you every week from the Digital Agency Show. Until then, I'm Brent Weaver. Thanks again for tuning in to the Digital Agency Show. Before we close out, I wanted to check in on your answer to my question from the beginning of the episode. Are you stressed out, cash crunched, fed up with your business? Now, if you feel this way, you might think that you have a lead generation problem. Maybe that it's the area you live in or that this market has gotten too competitive. Maybe you think that your business can't be turned around. And I want you to think again. In my many years of experience, I can tell you now it's something much deeper that you're likely not even aware of yet. It's like a client who says they need a website, Facebook ads, or a mobile app when they don't even realize it's a deeper challenge is blocking them from success. Now, if you'd like to find out what your deeper challenge is, then I want to invite you to apply for a strategy call where we're going to dig into those underlying issues in your business and get you moving forward like never before. The aha moments that you're going to have will shift the way you think forever, and you'll finally get the answers as to why your business hasn't taken off. The number one most important decision to rapidly grow your business starts by booking your YouGurus strategy call today. Go to yougurus.com slash apply to start the application process for this free call. Once again, go to yougurus.com slash apply to get started. Thanks again for tuning in. Join us next week for another episode of the Digital Agency Show. 